Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, and I am your host, Sheila Mack. Today, I want to shout out special thanks to the sponsor of this show. The We As Start Talking Podcast is a place for great conversations, topics, and stories from people just like you and me. Their podcast is focused on changing the world one conversation at a time. Each episode features a new guest, and along with their three hosts, they explore raw, honest, vulnerable, and fun subjects all in an effort to start talking. If you crave truth, compassion, understanding, and real-life stories, and want to be entertained, you've come to the right place. With episodes released on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week, there's always a great conversation waiting for you. The We As Start Talking podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Check them out at We As Start Talking website, which is www.weas.ca. That's W-E-A-S dot C-A. You can meet the hosts of We As Start Talking So please feel free to reach out to the team and say hi. The We As Start Talking podcast makes the world a better place, one conversation at a time. And again, thank you for the We As Start Talking podcast for helping the Sheila Mack Show stay on the air and get this message out. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, John Greiser. He is a film director, and um, he's the American film director, cinematographer, and photographer whose work spans nearly 50 years. He's been on assignment as a photojournalist and began documenting the Hare Krishna movement in 1970 and in the subsequent decade continued to capture the group's growth and influence in the rapidly expanding yoga and kirtan scene. He is best known for his documentary work in capturing the unique spiritual and traditional cultures of India and in 1978 produced the award-winning documentary Okay, I need help saying this one. Can you say this one for me, John? Vrindavan Land of Krishna. Beautiful. And now, 35 years later, his project, Hare Krishna, revisits the group, providing a behind-the-scenes insight into the founder of one of the most high-profile spiritual groups of the 20th century. And before we get started on our interview, I wanted to take a moment and share a quick preview of this incredible movie, Hare Krishna, the mantra, the movement, and the Swami who started it all. This movie is now available on Amazon Prime. So here we go. Take a listen or a viewing now. My spiritual master, he is calling 
he said that he would like to go to America. I said, you are you crazy? The old man, you are going to die. Someone told you the story, he wouldn't believe it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. He's 70 years old, he has no money, he's starting an effort, and it turns into an international movement. Everyone is thinking, I'm American, I'm Indian, I'm European, I'm Australian, but I'm not this body. I am a spirit soul. He looked like the Prime Minister of the Galaxy. Prabhupada was quite unlike any teacher we'd ever known. There was no gap between what he spoke and what he lived. The Vedic scriptures gave some sort of backbone to my life. People were joining left and right. Everywhere people went, there were Hare Krishnas. Many would consider members of the Hare Krishna sect to be dangerous religious fanatics, but the Krishnas say they're simply misunderstood. People would kidnap us and try to deprogram us. The more he got attacked, the more energized he began. Prabhupada loved a good fight. He was actually bringing some kind of ray of light to uh, the right place. Regardless of race, of religion, of nationality, we are all brothers and sisters. If I see this person, this soul, struggling just like I'm struggling in my body, I have a reason to love you. That's deep. His words carry so much power. It's a full expression of his heart that comes through. The perfection of this life is to understand oneself. This is the beginning. All right, welcome to the show, John. Thank you, Sheila. And I'd like to start um, each each show off with a question. And my question is kind of based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. This last 12 months, let's say, we have globally experienced things we never expected would happen again and they have happened in the past <laughs> it seems if we look back in history far enough so do you have a story maybe in your business or personal life where you had to overcome a tough situation and tips on how you got back on track yeah well uh, i was fortunate enough to meet Prabhupada, the founder of the movement back in 1970 in India, and his philosophy really rang true for me. And basically, it's not, we're not, we're of this world, but also we're apart from the world. You know, the body is, there's a difference between the body and the soul. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people identify themselves with the body and the mind. But actually in the ancient wisdom tradition of India, that's, that's not the case. So I really connected with that philosophy and it's helped me throughout my life. It's, uh, we're, we're a bit detached, mm -hmm. in other words, from all the stuff that goes on. Of course, I faced some, you know, health challenges over the years, like we all do. But, you know, that, that philosophy that we're not these material bodies or minds has really kept me above it all. Wow, that's beautiful. And that is that is an important lesson. I know for myself, <laughs> there was one year where I actually hired a different tax attorney and they made a mistake and they said that I earned a whole bunch of money, like they added zeros. <laughs> and, and then I got this tax audit. <laughs> and oh my goodness. My friend said, oh my gosh, if I had this audit, I would go crazy. I would just kill myself. Oh my God, I wouldn't know what to do. And I said, you know what? I am really detached from it. I know it was a mistake. <laughs> and they're mm. hide, and 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 they will correct it. Uh, you know, it cost me a few dollars to pay the guy to fix it, but mm. it wasn't. I totally let it go. And yeah, that's cool. It was interesting. It wasn't that long ago. It was the time that the government closed down. So I called my CPA back and I said, "Whatever happened with that?" You know because my friend was bothering me about it. He said, didn't you know they can't process it? Because <laughs> oh my gosh, 
I didn't Can't mean to find it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they did resolve it and it was uh, you know, perfectly fine. Good. And I, I realized at that moment that I totally could have gone down that rabbit hole that my mm -hmm. friend and many of the people I talked with going into that stress and focus yeah, sure. on something you can't change, whatever the results are, you <clears throat> what you need to do, you take the next right actions and you let it go. Of course you don't do nothing. I had to hire somebody to fix it <laughs> and do it, you know, the right actions, but then you let it go. Yeah. And being detached was I didn't have a health issue from it. I didn't I didn't get stressed from it. I just enjoyed my life. That's and, really important. Yes, and the time goes by anyway. And here in this year, right now, this last 12 months year, um things are going to go by anyway whether we focus on negative news and the crazy mm. stuff going on or whether we are detached from it and focus on love and bringing in what we want to bring into this world yeah focus on the positive that's always always the best mm -hmm. and i'd love to hear more about your experience and journey with all these years and studies um I know that the the story, I watched the film with my daughter and it was incredible. Um, and I'd love to hear more about that that journey and experience you had while you created this film. Yeah, the, the film took four years to make. We had a young crew um, in the early 20s, three of them, and my wife. That was, that was the uh, core team. So we had a mountain of material. We had uh, archival things that we shot uh, and photographs from the 70s, you know, preserved all those years. And uh, 31 hours of that. And we also had 1,800 hours of audio to go through of the founder, Prabhupada, uh, speaking about his own life. Mm -hmm. That was very rare, actually, in those 1,800 hours. So we had to go through it all and pick out those bits of him speaking about his own life because we felt that would be very important in the telling of the film for him to speak his own truth. Uh, we had 20,000 still photographs to go through. Uh, so it was a mountain of material. So where do you start? You know, mm -hmm. The structure of a film is, is really crucial. We made a film on his life in 1983, but that never saw a public release. This is our film, first public release uh, ever. And we've released films. We, our first film was in 1974. Uh, and it was on the movement, Hare Krishna People, it was called. So this is revisiting, you know, many, many years later. But uh, anyway, it, it, it's, it's been screened in uh, how many countries? 38 countries, theatrically. Uh, it's got a 4.7 out of 5 on Amazon. I don't know if, I don't know if you know IMDb imdb.com. Anyway, it's got a 9.2 out of 10 on that on that reading. So it's extremely popular. Prabhupada's story really transcends all racial and religious barriers. It's a universal kind of a her heroic, a hero's journey, actually. And he was incredible. He, um, he got the inspiration to do, to come to the West in 1922. When his spiritual master asked him to, to take the message of the ancient Vedic literature from India to the West. And he did that in 1965. He felt himself prepared only in 1965. He, was, he had no money. He had, I think, 40 rupees on the boat. And there was not even an exchange rate by the, at that time for rupees. So basically he had nothing. And he had one contact in America. He went there. But his real calling was to go to the uh, to New York City and uh, try to connect with people, the, the, the hippies, basically. Mm -hmm. People who were searching at that time. That was a big revolutionary period, the 60s. So he did that, uh, you know, went from office to office, this, this place, that place to stay. And he had his books, he sold his books, that's the way he made his money. But, uh, but he found a few followers, and that was the start of, of the movement, 1965. That takes an incredible amount of, of faith and a mission, a guided mission, to right. 
in both respects, in his respect, and then for you and, you and your wife and to spend years and, and go on this mission to write the films and share about this. So well, his story was is so is so uh, you know enlivening and inspiring. There was a seventy year old lady in in Dallas who saw the film. Mm -hmm. My wife and I toured theatrically with the film, and uh, to different theaters around the country and and around the world. The one lady in in uh, was it Dallas, Houston actually. After the film, she she said, you know, I'm seventy years old. I've given up my dream mm. in life. But after seeing what the Swami did at age 70, I'm going to take it up again. So he came here when he was 70. He so turned 70 on the freighter crossing the Atlantic. And that's the beginning of this movement here in this country, really at 70 years old. So if you're listening in right now and you're younger than 70 and you want to move <laughs> up, then you have nothing to talk about. <laughs> you still right. have the time. <laughs> yep. Yes, so that's good. And and during those years, I mean, that was after, let's see, there was, the, they had already finished, the pandemic was over. Uh, 65. Oh, 65. So, okay. So, yeah, yeah. he thought about it in 1922, and it took him that many years to actually come over. Yeah, he, he had a family. He, he did his duty to raise his family and uh, several children, and they were well situated when he left. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, you know, he was very responsible and dutiful, but his his guru in 1922 gave him the, the he requested him to go to the West and spread the, the teachings of ancient India in the West. Mm -hmm. And quite a few, you know, gurus came. Sachinananda uh, Swami came. Uh, quite a few Indian uh, teachers came at that time also. So it, it, there, a lot of people were searching. And today, a lot of people are searching. It's, it's kind of a similar revolutionary time. And I mean, it was very different. Even in the 60s, it was different than it is now. Yeah. <laughs> as far as open-mindedness. And I mean, I can go do kirtan anywhere. But unfortunately, with the lockdowns, not as much. But before all this it was something my daughter and I, my son and I, we would go to sing and do the kirtans and go to the f festivals, the bhakti festivals and all this now mm -hmm. and enjoy that and and do some yoga and meditation. And it was just, it's just been a part of our life here for me raising my kids in this time because of all these people in the past that have set the road for that set, that's right yes mm -hmm. yes and it's it's just such an experience and also i personally i got to go to india before all the lockdowns i think this was 2014 or 13 that i went the first time mm -hmm. and i went and stayed with with monks for a few weeks and learned meditation and it was that new that was new for me and meditation was a new thing. And <laughs> I had been rear-ended on the freeway, I guess in Hollywood, somebody was on their cell phone. And so I literally got a note from my doctor. I was really stiff and I said, give me a note please, because I don't wanna sit and meditate for long. Tell them I have to get up every hour. <laughs> <laughs> so it was me getting out of it. And I loved it and I enjoyed it and I, I actually meditate in the morning and at night now, and it's something that I've brought into my life that actually brings more, it gives me a lot of answers. And it does, yeah. Yes, and so, but it took a while. It took a few years. It wasn't like automatic. It wasn't those two, it was the two weeks in India and then a gradual practice that became part of my life. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, so it it's, it's a gradual process. It yes. takes time. It's yes. very foreign. I mean, when I first read some of the philosophy from India, I could not connect at all. But uh, it, it, so it's it's a gradual learning process and absorbing the knowledge and uh, meditation can can work wonders. Prabhupada taught bhakti yoga, which is mm -hmm. the yoga of devotion. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we also do, we also practice Hatha Yoga, many of us. 
<clears throat> but it's the it's the change of heart that's really the essence of bhakti yoga. It's the yoga of love, actually, uh, connecting with the divine, connecting with a higher power. And there, so, is, there is so many um, studies and people that I've talked to that maybe they had something going on physically, let's just say, whatever mm -hmm. it was, and the doctors didn't really have an answer, or maybe they did, but it was a ton of medicine. And they started doing kirtan and just singing and chanting at first. They couldn't even do yoga. And then they started yoga over time, and they switched their diet, and they, over time, they never had the, the health issue went away. Yeah. This, this ancient practice. And so a lot of people were attracted to the healing of yoga and, and of this whole, and the studies and the movement, I think as well. Did you see that over the years at all? Or what was your experience? Yeah, well, Baba taught the, uh, the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Maha means the great. Mm -hmm. Mantra means uh, connecting uh, to connect. So connect our minds and our spirits to the, uh, th to the divine, to Krishna. Uh, and uh, the Maha Mantra does that. It's a sound vibration. You know, if we want to actually change our lives, we should change the sound vi vibration, we, the things we listen to. Mm -hmm. And that will, that will do, make a huge difference. You know, they've done studies with the mantra applying to plants and also there's there's shapes in water uh -huh. that different sound vibrations produce and it's incredible what the maha mantra does it's it's uh plants flourish with it and we also flourish if we put ourselves in touch with that that particular sound vibration so sound is crucial Prabhupada gave the example if you if you want to wake up a sleeping man you do it by sound if you, you know, if you're, say, say, locked out of the room, how, mm -hmm. how do you wake them up? You do it by sound. So similarly, we can also be woken up from, from our material consciousness by spiritual sound vibration. Yes, yes. It's, and I think there's, there's so much, it's very healing. It's, so when you think about the environment, it, for those listening in, our environments matter. Even the music we listen to, the words we say, whether you're working, if you're on Zoom calls with coworkers, where you're home with your children right now, homeschooling, whatever's going on, how the energy that you bring, <clears throat> who you're being and all you're doing is gonna make a big difference in how, especially for young people, it's kind of a scary time right now. If, you know, turn the, the news off, if you need to mm. watch the news, watches away from the children and if you need to explain whatever you want to explain it to them at their safe level however you want to do that so they understand whatever at their level but they don't need to see the images or uh it's really scary for for little children or even young young adults right now so yeah. the, that, the, the, the negative the negative makes the news mm -hmm. generally you know the shocking stuff going on and we don't we don't really need a lot of that in our lives. No, and it go, okay. I, it goes back to the detachment that we started this conversation with detachment. How That's really important? How can we detach? So, for those listening in, do you have some suggestions to help people that maybe are trying to learn how to do this detachment and they haven't done it very well or haven't really done it before, and this is kind of new for them? How can they start? To well, I, I would suggest uh, Prabhupada's formula, and that's chanting mantras, mm -hmm. ancient, ancient Sanskrit mantras that are proven to be effective. Uh, there's a whole line of, of uh, yogis and, and sadhus and swamis in India who have used this, this mantra. And the, Maha, the Maha mantra is the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare, there's three words, Hare, Krishna and Rama. Mm. So it's Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. So this is a 16 word mantra. 
And actually, the, the yogis, they chant on beads. In fact, I have some beads somewhere. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they're somewhere else. It's a string of 108 beads. And each mantra is on one bead. You chant on one bead. And so that takes about uh, 10 minutes for one round. So if, if you can do that for 10 minutes a day, I think you'll see the results. Mm. So then maybe if you're going to a negative thought or a worry thought, let's say, you could you would then switch to a mantra, that mantra or a mantra of your choice, and yeah. that can help you to kind of redirect your mind or focus yeah. away from that situation that you can't change. That's right. And we, we should we should we should put our attention on the things that we can do something about. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not going to help to get that information. Yes, we should, we should be informed generally what's going on. Right. <laughs> not that we're completely out of it, but you know, really choose to what we listen to and what we look at. Mm -hmm. Another mantra is is Om, O M. I mean, I think pretty much everyone's heard of that. Yes, very peaceful Om. Om. So anyway, there's many mantras out there, but I, I would recommend those two. Now, I remember I first learned about this kirtan in a yoga studio in Northern California. And before the, and I'm like, okay, health and fitness, we're going to do yoga. I'm like, totally, <laughs> this is like, I was like, I'm going to get into shape. Yes, power yoga. And I go in there and it was like 15 minutes of chanting before we did the yoga practice. And then mm. we chanting after and then we did this breathing exercise after that and it was it changed from a yoga to like this sacred experience wonderful and it was so peaceful and healing and it was just it i loved it you're hooked yes i still know <laughs> the lady that owned the studio it's closed now but one day she'll probably be on the show um but it was just such a switch and i i I was like, I need to find, where's the kirtan? New Year's Eve parties in Los Angeles, I would find the kirtan parties. Oh. <laughs> and we would go, and my, my kids would show up with me, and I'd have a group of 20 friends, and we'd all go. And we wouldn't be getting into trouble, but we would be, you know, bringing in the new year in a really healthy way. Fantastic. Yes, and it Wonderful. made all the difference. So there's little switches that we can make. That, that really help yeah, yeah. so much. Yes. Wonderful to hear. <laughs> Just, and, and so I'd love to hear now on this experience that you had, you so you were lucky enough to have a personal relationship with the leader of this movement. Mm -hmm. How did that affect your life and um, change from... <clears throat> Or you met him, and and was there a, a change that took place in your life? Yeah, I was doing a photo assignment for Asia Magazine in in the summer of 1970, and I was asked to cover the Hare Krishna Temple in New York, in Brooklyn. So I went there, and uh, they took me in front of the altar with the with the mortis, the deities of Radha and Krishna. Mm. And uh, I just had, kind of had a feeling that this was uh, meant for me. I, I had a, a, a very strong attraction. And we understand that from probably last life experience. Mm. Prabhupada believed in reincarnation, and I also do. There's many studies on the validity of reincarnation, that, that basically that our soul is eternal. And after this life, we get another body. It goes on. So uh, I was attracted initially, and uh, I had to do a master's thesis in photography. So I told my professors, I'd like to go to India to meet Prabhupada. Mm, wow. And do a story on the Hare Krishna movement. So I did that. I didn't come back for two and a half years. <laughs> so Prabhupada basically turned my life upside down in terms of lifestyle. And understanding of you know who we are what we're here for and what we're meant to be doing 
in our lives. So it was a big, uh, big change. But my wife's story is even more dramatic. Mm -hmm. She came two months after I came to, to India. And I was really attracted to Hare Krishna movement and the Prabhupada. She was an atheist. She helped. She was the writer on that first article. She was my girlfriend at the time. Uh -huh. So we both stayed in the temple and did the article. But she was, uh, <laughs> she didn't like the experience so much. It was interesting for her, but she was not attracted at all. So when she came to India, she was kind of thinking, "Let me get, let me get him back." Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, "Let's, let's get into this. This is, you know, this is far out." So anyway, she came and we stayed two and a half years. We were married in Vrindavan. That was the, mm. the film that we did, uh, that, that name of the town, Land of Krishna. And uh, we stayed two and a half years, came back to the States and did the first film on the movement, Hare Krishna People. So basically everything was, and you know, she, from atheism, she went to theism. Mm. She's got an incredible book out on her conversion. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't say conversion, I would say uh, her, her, her uh, transformation. Mm -hmm. Conversion doesn't have good connotations, but transform, she was transformed. But uh, the book is, is the, it's on Amazon, five years, 11 months, and a lifetime of unexpected love. Oh, that's so beautiful, wow. And I'm wondering, so you were you were kind of young, college age maybe when you went to India? 20, 26. So what did your parents say about this? Were they <laughs> foreign or where were they at with this idea? They were very, uh, you know, concerned what, what's going on. So my dad came to India during that time to visit us. Uh -huh. he, he was a very liberal person, so he, he really appreciated it in the long run. That's great. He's a university professor in American history. Wow. So uh, he met Prabhupada. That was interesting. And uh, so, yeah, many parents were alarmed by, mm -hmm. by people joining. Uh, but the, eventually, if they, they, saw it, they saw the improvement in the lives of their, of their kids generally. In fact, pretty much across the board. You know, giving up intoxication, no, no cigarettes, no alcohol, no drugs. Uh, it was a big improvement. Yes, yes, that is that is a big improvement, especially during the 60s. <laughs> the 60s, yeah, yeah. Free, free love also. Yes, and there, I mean, and now there's, there's so many young adults that are choosing uh, alternative lifestyles and health and wellness and... Um, doing this kind of healthy, you know, meditation and spirituality versus mm. getting into drugs and alcohol and this and that. And, you know, we lose, I think it's the studies say 70,000 young adults, we lose a year to overdose. That's from, incredible. And so incredible. to be able to find alternatives that are healthy and friends that could say, hey, you know what? No, let's go do the kirtan and let's find um, a natural high, a connection to spirituality and, you know, bring more love and light into this world and not don't need all that stuff. Yeah. To There's a different way. It's <laughs> and, wonderful for you to, to hear that. Yeah. Fantastic. So that is, that's the switch. And I know that it, it really has made a difference even for, for us, you know, you hear during the holidays, how many times people get into trouble or they're fighting and this and that. And I'm like, no, let's go chant and sing together. We don't need to do do all these other crazy things. Let's go have mm -hmm. fun and bring in the new year. And I we've done that every year now. This last year, we, we had to do it over the internet for the mm -hmm. first time. And we, we did that with a big group. And it wasn't, it wasn't the same, but it was still we were so grateful to have that connection and that community is like an extension of our family. Fantastic. Yes. So that does make a difference for, for all of us. And it helps. I love that. I mean, you, you believe this reincarnation and then you have this dad that is so open-minded 
<laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to fly to India. And I, I kind of like this. So that that's interesting. And some of us are I, parents. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Actually, he, my dad smuggled in a, uh, a Super 8 camera, a movie camera, because I didn't have a movie camera at the time. So mm. some of the films in the Hare Krishna movie are from that time. Wow. Thanks to my dad. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, so isn't that interesting? Some of us, I mean, I don't know what what is the belief um, in the Hare Krishna movement on the reincarnation and do we choose our, our family and our, our ups and downs, our situations as well, part of our, yeah. our teachings or our our learnings, can you give give a little bit of insight? Yeah, you know, really depending on how we live our life, <clears throat> we're gonna think about that at the time of death. Mm. Whatever we think about at the time of death, we're gonna take on a body to fulfill those desires. That's, that's something to think about. Um, yeah, whatever we're, th we're, we're meditating on or thinking about the time of death. You know, there's some movies I've seen at the, fi at the final time of death, the person's life flashes in pictures Yes. in front of them. I think everyone's seen that. So we meditate on our, our entire life and we get a, a body to fulfill those un you know, unfulfilled desires. Mm. So, you know, if, if it's um, whether, you know, we want to, I mean, we can go into some graphic detail, but there's there's many species of life that we can enter into. Mm -hmm. Not not only human form, but but below different different lower species of life, also including down to um, the cell, cellular level. Viruses, and bacteria, they're they're all they're all alive. Wow. Well, that that's an interesting thought. The virus. Now, who came back as this? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what, really low in the scale. What were they? What what are they needing? <laughs> press. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that that would be interesting to to figure out. But you know, I think there's something. If you look at every single culture around the world, any religion you see people that have crossed over and they always have these same experiences as they're as they're preparing to cross over where they're talking to somebody else or they see mm -hmm. their loved ones or they're they're preparing yeah. there's something mm -hmm. else beyond this definitely it doesn't end and there's some there's some startling stu studies on reincarnation mm -hmm. some great movies out about it you know people little kids who remember the last life Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and they've never been there and they t they go to that place and they say yes this is where i played and this is this is this and this is that person they identify places and people in that same place so, so it's, it's 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 quite real and yeah. Prabhupada was very one of the very first to introduce that idea into uh, into the west hmm. i mean that's you know it's been around for a long time the Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, Pra Prabhupada translated his version, Bhagavad Gita as it is. Mm -hmm. And but that was read by, you know, all the great intellectuals in the eighteen hundreds, Thoreau, Emerson, Gandhi. So some very some very uh, famous intellectual and spiritual people have studied that book for, for decades, for hundreds of years actually. So there's some timeless wisdom there. Yes, and I think it's so beautiful to be able to study different religions and all of them to, to get a great understanding of the world and culture overall. Um, years ago, I actually, I have six children. So I adopted wow. three of mine, they're all mine, right? And it, it was a guided thing. I, I was told you can't have any more. So I adopted three, then I had the last two. So that's kind of how it happened. <laughs> and within that, I, I wanted them to go to schools that were aligned with very open-minded schools that gave them diversity and and gave them the ability to think for themselves. Mm. So I ended up sending them to to Waldorf schools and then a Waldorf teacher. And through that, I had to go through the training and learn. Oh. And for me, it was it was such a gift 
I had so much fun and I got to study religions I never even heard of uh, before the teacher training. And it changed my view of the world. And, and Rudolf Steiner also believed in reincarnation. And, and so it was, yeah. it was incredible. And it, it had me realize that we do, when we understand other people's belief systems and cultures and respect them and learn from them that we're able to connect with the people because we know where they're where they're what mm. they're where they're coming from it's you can't leave that whole part of a person out or a culture that's right yeah it's it's just such a big part of why they do what they do and how things are done and yeah the, actually the great religions of the world all believe in in a life after this life mm -hmm. it's 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 across the board universal yes so uh it's it's an incredible uh it's a science actually how to how to uh get to the best place after this life india has just you know <clears throat> um, a treasure house of, of literature that uh has, has really not been discovered fully it's unlimited actually mm. uh, as, as far as books and, and what and what you can read. But I was going to mention my daughter is also in Montessori training. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. And before I did Waldorf, I actually did Montessori as well. So I'm sorry. I, <laughs> well, not Wal is it Waldorf or Montessori? I think she's Montessori. Okay. Because they're different, but they're similar in some ways. And in yeah. and, and some ways, they're very different. And other ways, they're very similar. And it's just a fun different way and if you're listening in and you have kids at home look into these different methods to help with your children at home because you have the mm. how to teach them at home now anyway because that's your schools aren't open then you can experiment and see what what works well with your child <clears throat> because that makes a difference and I'd, I'd love to hear now people are able to watch your movie where can they watch the Hare Krishna movie now it's on Amazon Prime, free for Prime members. It's actually on Amazon Prime in, in Latin America also. Uh, Russia, UK, Germany, and Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying for India. That would be so, nice. That yeah. would be nice, yeah. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, our website, uh, harikrishnathefilm.com. Okay, harikrishnathefilm.com. Oh. That's right. All right. And also it's in it's in 22 languages on the harikrishnafilm.com. All the major Euro European languages, two Chinese dialects, Japanese, Arabic. So yeah. we've, uh, we want we want the film to be seen worldwide because Prabhupada's story is is really universal. Uh, as I said, it crosses all racial and religious barriers. Mm-hmm. And there's so much science behind the science. This the right. science and spirituality and how how we change how we're being in our world today can help change the world and the energy, like the vibrational energy of what's going on. <laughs> so let's have a watch party. Let's all watch Hare Krishna. Let's download it this weekend and and share about it i'd love to have people comment on it or call in about it all right thank you again for being a guest on the show john thank you sheila it was, it was great wonderful right. thank you stay Take tuned we'll be back soon bye-bye bye if you are just tuning in this is the sheila mack show and I am your host, Sheila Mack, here on NBC's KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. Today, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this show, UniDragon. UniDragon offers various types of wooden jigsaw puzzles that you can play with and learn with during your leisure time. Their wooden unique puzzles are made out of the highest quality woods and come to you with a beautiful artwork design. 
Use the gift of time and peaceful play with Unidragon wooden puzzles to improve your memory, problem-solving skills, visual spatial ability, mood, and to lower your stress levels. With Unidragon wooden jigsaw puzzles at any age, they have been shown to help promote eye and hand coordination and increase your creativity. So next time you are stuck or working on a project and need a mind break, take a Uni Dragon break and work on a puzzle. Uni Dragon is one of the best puzzle games on the market, helping bring play and happiness back to the world one puzzle piece at a time. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, and I am your host, Sheila Mack. I'd like to give a special shout out and thanks to one of the show's sponsors today, which is Unidragon, Unidragon Wooden Jigsaw Puzzles. Unidragon offers various types of wooden jigsaw puzzles that you can play with and learn with during your leisure time. Their wooden, unique puzzles are made out of the highest quality woods and come to you with a beautiful artwork design. Use the gift of time and peaceful play with Unidragon wooden puzzles to improve your memory, problem solving skills, visual spatial ability, mood, and to lower your stress level. With Unidragon wooden jigsaw puzzles, at any age, they have been shown to help promote eye-hand coordination and increase creativity. So next time you are stuck on a project, take out a Uni Dragon wooden jigsaw puzzle. Uni Dragon is one of the best puzzle games on the market, helping bring play and happiness back to the world, one puzzle piece at a time. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, and I am your host, Sheila Mack. This show is brought to you today in part by Unidragon. Unidragon offers various types of wooden jigsaw puzzles that you can play with and learn with during your leisure time. Their wooden unique puzzles are made out of the highest quality woods and come to you with a beautiful variety of artwork designs. Use the gift of time and peaceful play with Uni Dragon wooden puzzles to improve your memory, problem solving skills, visual spatial ability, mood, and to lower your stress levels. With Uni Dragon wooden jigsaw puzzles at any age, they have been shown to help with neuroplasticity while promoting eye and hand coordination and increasing creativity. So the next time you are stuck, Trying to figure out something puzzling in your business or personal life? Take a puzzle break. Yuna Dragon's one of the best puzzle games on the market, helping people bring play and happiness back to the world one puzzle piece at a time. Order your Uni Dragon wooden jigsaw puzzles today at www.unidragon.com. And now it's time for a Dear Sheila. So if you have a question, for me, please send it in to www.dearsheila.com and your question may be selected to be shared on one of the radio shows. And if your question is shared, it will also be entered in a contest. This is a giveaway question contest. So once your question is shared on the air, you'll be entered to win a prize. And we have some fun prizes from many different vendors. So send your questions in again to dearsheila.com. Now take a listen. Here's a question. Dear Sheila, I struggle with really bad panic attacks. Sometimes it gets so bad that it gets triggered at work and I will have to leave because I can't stop crying. I can't live like this anymore. I'm thinking about trying medication because I want to get in control of my thoughts and my breathing. Because I've heard that meditation helps with anxiety. What do you think about that? What advice can you give me about meditation versus medication? And what techniques work best to conquer anxiety? Signed, 
struggling to breathe. Dear struggling to breathe, panic attacks are some severe issues. Now, meditation is a huge help. However, I would definitely start with checking in with my doctor. And the reason I say that is because sometimes panic attacks can be a symptom of something else going on physically. So I would suggest that you go to your doctor, have them do a regular physical exam, and let them know what's going on. Was there something that triggered these attacks? Was there something that happened in your life? Did you hit a rock bottom event that you started to notice these panic attacks? Sometimes it could be that your vitamin D levels are severely low or some other thing could be terribly off. It could be a medication that you're taking that's interacting with some other thing you're taking or a food you're eating and it's causing you to feel like you're having panic attacks. It could be hormones that are off. And so just rule those things out first. You can start meditation right away. Doesn't mean you have to wait for the doctor to start meditation because meditation is something you could do at any time in your life. Could have been an auto accident, could have been um, losing a loved one. Anything can cause panic attacks. And it could be that it reminded you of something that happened when you were really young and then one little thing brings all that back and then you start having these severe panic attacks and once you have a panic attack it it makes you have physical symptoms and so learning how to breathe when you meditate when we meditate we're learning how to slow ourselves down how to breathe and how to like let go of the outside thoughts and and go into a place where we can just calm ourselves so we're training our body and we're retraining our brain to, to think differently and, and get control of our thoughts because that's a way to get control of these panic attacks. And there has been study after study that shows that meditation will help you overcome these panic attacks. So between your medical doctor, perhaps some therapy or other resources, depending on what was your trigger, and good meditation practice, you can overcome this these panic attacks quickly and get back on track. I hope this helps. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. Thank you for listening to Dear Sheila, answering real questions with real solutions to reboot your life. If you have a burning question, submit your question now to www.dearsheila.com www.dearsheila.com. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. And I also would like to share with you something that some other things that I also offer. I do have Mastermind Live Weekly Courses, and those are available at SheilaMack.com, S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C.com. And there right now, for this month, all the courses are on sale for January for our New Year's kickoff. And I have actually opened up a few more afternoon spots um, and days. So we have some new course availabilities. If you are looking for courses, a mastermind group, they're small groups. I lead all the courses. I do actually have a few co-leaders and special guests that come on throughout the month. And these are one month at a time, or you can take the course and continue with the group for up to 12 months. Um, Depending on what you're doing, we use the Boots formula. And that's something I teach about. There's a free course that you take a mini course that teaches you about the Boots formula. You can also align it with my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action. And that Boots formula is something that I've used with many of my clients and I've used myself and that's why I came up with the formula. And it's helped me get back on track 
whenever I've had a, a difficult spot in life, and life does have waves, we have to learn how to surf, of course. So getting through parenting, so I have parenting courses. I raised six amazing children that are now all college and above. <laughs> and so three are mine, three I fostered to adopt. So I have a diverse, beautiful, incredible family and lots of um, experience raising children. And then I also um, have one on elder care. There, So if you are dealing with um, maybe having your elders back at home or helping your parents and now you're parenting your parents, that is a big thing. And there's a lot of pieces to that. I actually took care of all my relatives um, that they've all passed away now, but parents, grandparents, and I was the one in charge of everyone at a young age where everybody was um, needing different care because I had grandparents and the parents could not take care of my grandparents. So I had quite a bit of experience in that. And um, so we have small groups that work on how to deal with those those issues and having those sacred conversations with our parents. Uh, we also have Breaking Free from Addiction. Uh, we have a course on self-care and spirituality and then lifestyle design. And that's uh, this is a great time if you have hit some rock bottoms last year and you are now ready this is a clean slate and it is a great time to now redesign your life reinvent your life on your terms we do use the boots formula we have small groups and we have real live discussions and answers to help you support you getting through your lifestyle design to get you back on track and rebooted as quickly as possible. So check those out at www.sheilamack.com. And also you can get the book. It is now a best-selling book. It is available on Audible, Kindle, hardcover, softcover, and also I had a blast. I have to tell you, I had a blast doing the audible recordings in a studio in Southern California. And this was actually done before the lockdowns, <laughs> um, actually in late 2019. One of the last memories I have of when the world was different before we had to wear masks. <laughs> and so it was a, a beautiful experience. And I hope you enjoy that book this month. I am also donating one book or one course um, to someone in a homeless shelter. I'm focused on moms in homeless shelters that are trying to get back on their feet and reboot. And so I'm gifting them books and I'm also gifting them with the ability to attend some of these courses as well to help them quickly and easily get back on their feet with the support of a good group. And I think that makes all the difference. So I look forward to seeing you in one of the classes or when we tune in next time here on NBC's Sheila Mack Show. All right. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. So here it is, my latest book. I have to let you know something just between you and me. This book is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Max new number one bestseller boot straps and bra straps it contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation especially right now the life has knocked you down pick yourself up with boot straps and bra straps get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today for you to grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now available on Audible 
as well as on Amazon and Kindle and at www.sheilamack.com.